Hello knitting addicts, welcome to my living room and to episode 17 of my creative podcast. I'm Selma and you can find me on social networks and in particular Instagram and Ravelry as Selma TLDC. I hope you're well, I've had two very productive weeks which I will tell you more about in a second and uh, so there will be a lot of sewing, quite a fair bit of knitting as well um, and very very nice stash and bookshelf enhancements. Um, yeah, let's go! So we can start directly with the finished projects and they are, well let's start with the knitting. I have two finished knitting projects which are, well, the first one is the Water Birch shawl by uh, Sylvia McFadden. I told you about this designer last time already because I knit her um, pebble hat. This shawl is part of the designs shown in the in her book called A Stillness of Trees, which I ordered from her Etsy um, shop a few months ago, let's say. Um, it's a very, very nice book. The pictures are beautiful and the designs in it. There are three shawl designs. They are really nice as well. I've wanted to make this one for quite some time, but because I really like the leaf pattern you know um but i thought that i didn't have anything in my stash for it and i didn't really want to buy new yarn you know and then i was sorting out through my stuff last week and i found um a skein of um cascade ecological wood wood wool <laughs> sorry um uh, cascade ecological wool um which is just perfect for that shawl it's knit in size 10 needles which is just gigantic which also means that I knit it in two days blocking included actually um, the only thing is well, at first I didn't have size 10 needles I had to borrow them from a friend but that was no big deal the thing is it's really actually not pleasant yeah I had well it had been quite some time since I had last knit um, with such big needles and to be honest I think that straight needles would have been more pleasant but in the end you had too many stitches to make them fit on straight needles so I used circular ones and it's just really hard to actually grasp you know to keep in your hands and it's not really comfortable but it went really fast and um, it's super warm. I've been wearing it all the time lately because I like, you know, it was 80 centimeters when I finished it and you could not really see, you couldn't really see the, the pattern. And then it blocked to 100, no, yeah, a meter and 45 centimeters, which is fairly big um, to quite some plate quite some space in my bedroom which is where I actually block my stuff because I have um, room for it basically <clears throat> so I've been wrapping it this way and it keeps my neck warm I actually I hate um, having drafts particularly in the winter but any any season really I mostly always wear a scarf or um, or a shawl around my neck even in summer spring or summer depending on the temperature obviously but I tend to get colds quite easily so I prefer avoiding risk let's say it's really really nice I love it I'm happy I made it <laughs> the second finished project is actually a bit of a project of shame you know it's uh, booties they belong to a set um, with a jacket, basically a cardigan, a baby cardigan, which I knit last year, well, during the Christmas holidays in 2016. So that's why I'm, say I'm saying it took me over a year to make these and that was basically an afternoon's work, you know. So yeah, 
so I used the same yarn, which was cotton from KPC Yarns, which I had bought at a fair two years ago. And at first I knit the bigger size because there are two sizes in the pattern. So I, at first I knit the bigger size. And then when I finished the first one, I recognized that I would never ever have enough yarn for the second one, which sucks. Well, it sucked. So I, for, I started the second one in the smaller size. And when I reached the end of the yarn, I frogged the first one and finished it. And even that way, I was really, really running short on yarn uh, for the second one and when it came time to finish it. So um, like to, to, to weave in the ends and everything. So that's probably the ugliest um, end weaving that I've ever made, but it's not visible. You can't see a difference. So the, the only problem is that they don't fit together. The, the cardigan is too big for the <laughs> boot size. So I guess I will just have to um, offer them to two different people. It doesn't really matter. I have so many pregnant friends at the moment so that I can just offer them and it won't make a difference. But yeah, it's a bit ridiculous, really. Anyway, that's my two um, knitting finished objects. I've been sewing quite a lot, actually, in the last two weeks. The first um sewing project was a sleeping mask which i um which i made for my friend imogen who was going to japan and had to send a call for help on instagram to know if anyone could make her one i know that ricardo uh, who has the canary lotus podcast also made her one which was really nice with the cat's ears on top you know on, the, on top of the eyes it's really nice mine was more discreet let's say I uh, used um, navy um, Japanese fabric. I will I will put a picture because I can't show it to you because obviously she left with it. So yeah, uh, the pattern is from Tilly and the Buttons. I found it on their website, just looking up sleeping mask pattern on Google. And um, it was really easy to follow. I had the, 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 I basically had everything in my stash already, so it was fine. And what I really liked about the pattern is that the elastic in the back was covered with fabric, which I think is more comfortable. Yeah, it took me like not even an evening, a full evening of sewing. So yeah, I'm really happy about it. And I will probably make more in the future. Mm, the second um, finished object is the one I'm wearing. I will show you that one first, although I made it more recently than the other one. Um, I actually finished it last night at one, which is why I went to bed late, which is why I might yawn. See, I'm just talking about it and it makes me tired. I should really go to bed earlier. That's what I, that's actually what I think every morning when I get up, um, I should really go to bed earlier and yet I never do it. I don't know why, but it never happens. Anyway, so that's the Moneta dress uh, by Colette Patterns. I used a Milano jersey, fabric which is not too stretchy but just just what's needed it was super easy to make you have really basic pieces so front back short well uh, arms so two arms uh, front of the skirt back of the skirt and then four pieces for the pockets so that's 10 pieces in a whole it's the explanations in the booklet are really easy to follow it went really really well um, and also I start to understand to know to have a bit more vocabulary in sewing in English you know because that's yeah it's not really stuff which I actually use in my everyday life so um, but anyway the fabric is quite heavy but I think it's fine because that way I didn't need to uh, line it and um, the skirt folds beautifully I love the fact that it has deep pockets um, I really love pockets I need pockets in my life I need more pockets in my life uh, I always have stuff on me always and I find it really unple unpleasant when I don't have pockets I have a pair of jeans which I love apart from the fact that they only have back pockets the front pockets are fake ones who makes fake front pockets obviously cheap Monday does <laughs> Anyway, um, it was also the occasion to use my uh, double um, 
double needle or twin needle I think that's how it's called yeah twin needle for the the neckline and uh, hems at the on the arms and on the bottom super easy to use I find uh, I and I find the end result really pretty and it's well actually much prettier than the zigzag point which I would have used normally well which I would have used previously because I bought the twin needle fairly recently so yeah the only difficulty was the clear elastic which is at the waist because I didn't have um, I didn't have any and I don't know why I completely forgot to buy some so I bought it yesterday uh, on my way to coffee with friends and uh, well, to lunch with friends and um, it's six millimeters so it's fairly thin and the fact that you need well you need to be careful to stretch the elastic but not the fabric which is which you're uh, sewing with it so yeah you need to sew straight and try to have a pretty even um, pull on the elastic it's not that easy so uh, the gathering at the waist with the shirring that's the word they use in the in the pattern is not super regular but it's okay it's not visible when you well at the end you don't see any difference so it's fine but i was like ah and it's 74 centimeters well in my in my case it's 74 centimeters of elastic so it's complicated <laughs> but it was complicated but anyway yeah because i had asked on instagram what shall i make next shall i make the moneta dress or the pants which i was planning as well and um, I was actually reading through, I, I was done uh, cutting the pieces because the Moneta dress actually won. I was done cutting the pieces and I recognized that I didn't have the elastic. So I'm, that's why I made it yesterday. Because I didn't have any occasion to go buy the elastic before that. Um, yeah, I think I will actually make more of this dress. It's... Um, yeah, I started like at maybe... Well, let's say in a whole it took me maybe six hours of sewing so that's not that much to be honest yeah i find it reasonable the as i said the explanations were very clear it went fine i'm happy i love it i think i'm going to keep it today oh i mean not that i usually dress up on, only for the for the podcast but yeah I think it's getting warm enough to actually wear it. <laughs> not that it stops me for, for well, not that the weather stops me from wearing shorts or skirts even when it's really cold. But anyway, that's why tights exist, right? We can move on to the last um, pattern, well, which I used this week lately. Uh, small. Um, break for while we are telling you that today I'm drinking green tea from China which is basically just loose leaves which you throw in your cup and you pour hot water on it and when they're ready they fall to the bottom you know so contrary to gnocchis actually gnocchis when you finish cooking them when they're cooked they float up you know well these they go down they sink anyway there is no risk of you actually eating tea leaves while you're drinking it right no. It's just plain green tea, no flavorings, no funny taste, just plain green tea. I love it. Anyway, yeah, so the last, the last project I actually made was the Botanic Pants by Pauline Alice. Um, the pattern is, is actually in Spanish, English and French, which um, makes it good for oh oh the ugly color i'm so sorry um for the the image which you just got um yeah i so that's wool so it's not too thick you know i don't know if you can really see yeah it's it's very really thin but it's still very warm which is nice at the moment because it is cold so we call them jupe culottes so that's um that's uh, skirt pants basically i don't know i don't know what what word is used in english i think it would be culotte actually um they fall to my mid calf 
and I love them. They're so comfortable. And again, they have huge pockets, you know, which is something that is becoming more and more mandatory for me. Pockets, again. It has an elastic waist and a removable belt, which makes it very forgiving at the waist. I actually made um, the size 40, I think, and given the measurements, I thought it might be a little small. So I, instead of the 1.5 uh, seam allowance that was um, recommended, I used the one centimeter, but it's absolutely no problem. I, I think I could have gone for the regular one, the recommended one, um, but I'm super comfortable. It's, uh, it's high waisted. Um, yeah, I think I will make more in lighter fabrics for summer, I think. Yeah, you can basically, at least with that one, you can, you know, cross your legs and everything without worrying that anyone can see your underwear. Um, that's what's cool with pants and shorts. Anyway, <clears throat> the explanations are very clear again. Uh, I had absolutely no no problem making it. It was probably even faster to make than the dress. Uh, although it was my first real pair of pants because the the only thing which I made re vaguely resembling that was the, was the sh were the shorts and I had a full video to go along with it. The the Brooklyn shorts which were two or three episodes ago. Um yeah. It's um it's my new favorite pants. I also love the fabric. I think I will get more to make like a skirt or something because I um, the light is really changing a lot today. I'm really sorry about that. I can see it on the on my screen that it's it gets more yellow and it gets more blue and there is no way I can actually make up for that in editing. So sorry. Um, yeah, that's it. That's it for my finished objects. Let's move on to the whips. Uh, I have I have two works in progress on my needles at the moment. So this is the pavement sweater, the, the pattern. Well, you're probably getting bored of me hearing me talking about it episode after episode, but I finally finished the body. Yay! Um, so I'm on to the first sleeve. <laughs> and I hate it, <laughs> which is why I started something else, because I'm just so bored. With that but eh, you need to make it I would really like to actually be able to wear it at in Edinburgh so I will just kick my own butt and go for it <clears throat> actually I had planned at the beginning of the year to finish one knitting and one sewing project per month so I made more in sewing but the knitting was uh, subpar um i th i had said that for Ma for february i would like to finish either the this pullover or or the the dunny bake um hap which i'm making and none of that happened so but i made a lot of progress on this so i'm hoping to finish it for edinburgh yeah the length is perfect i should actually weave in the up the ends already on the or did i is that my working yarn yeah it is my working yarn yeah i did weave in the ends on top and on the bottom already it's longer in the back than in the front that's why it looks a bit weird it will look better once it's finished and blocked blocked and worn and everything mm, so the second project which is on my needles today is the zigzag hat which is um, a hat with stranded color work it's no I thought it was smelling weird but that's not it's probably the other stuff which I have in the yarn <laughs> smelling weird not weird but like sheep you know <laughs> so this hat it's um it starts with 15 millimeters of ribs and i'm knitting it continental which is not what i usually do i usually knit 
English style, but since my right hand is a bit painful at the moment, I thought it would be good to actually give it a break. It's not really working because I'm actually quite tight on my needle, but still better. So, so it starts with 15 meter, uh, 15 meters. That's how it feels. 15 meters, 15 centimeters of ribs, which will be folded afterwards. And the body has five. Um, well, it's supposed to have in a whole five co five colors, so one main and four contrasting ones. So that's what it looks like afterwards. But I've decided to go for only three colors, one main and two contrasting. So I made my own chart in black and white because that's the colors which I'm actually using: black, white, and gray. Um, I'm using blacker yarns. because they're organizing well black yarns is organizing as sponsor for the podcast lounge in edinburgh they are organizing the black club pod call which runs basically to the weekend before the festival and the only requirement is to knit something with their yarn so i've ordered some from their website i went for shetland for the gray and the white and for a uh, pure black welsh mountain for the black gray and did i say black for that i can't remember anyway gray and white that's shetland dk and the black is pure black welsh mountain it's aaron weight but to be honest i compared them because they had no black left in dk yarn so in dk weight when you put them next to each other it's not that the difference is not that strong so i think it won't be a problem particularly since um it's only small parts which are in black so i'm fairly certain it's going to work so yeah i'm up to 13 centimeters and i'm looking forward to the last five uh, rows before i actually can go on to the body of the of the hat i recognize two days ago that I'd made a mistake. I was going this way, you know, just looking, is it fine? How does it stretch? And then I recognized there was a small hole. So I just did this, you know, to check the ribs. Hmm? And then there was a hole indeed. And so I thought, okay, I will just frog this, this whale and we will see what it looks like, you know, and we'll fix that. But it was not something that could be fixed. What I recognized was that I, um, since I'm not, holding the yarn in the same hand as usual i actually i i put down my knitting and then i took it back and i went back the wrong way i went back well instead of going on with my row i actually went the other way around which basically made a short row it was almost invisible to be honest but i did yeah perfectionism kicked in and so I frogged the, what, six centimeters? <laughs> no, a bit less than that. Maybe four or five. And I, oh, sorry. And I fixed it that way. It would probably not have been visible, particularly since it's folded afterwards. But yeah, no, there was no way I could leave that. <laughs> so. It slowed me down a bit, but I'm fairly certain that I can actually finish it by mid next week, I'd say. Yeah. I didn't start, I didn't cast on my um, Secret sweater, which I swatched, well, which I showed you the swatch for last time. Actually, I re knit the swatch in size four needles because, no, in size four, four and a half, because in the last podcast I told you I will knit it again in 375 which was ridiculous because um my swatch was too small so i needed bigger needles i don't know why i went the other way i don't know but anyway i recognized it basically like short after i filmed the podcast and i was not about to go back to correct it so yeah i will i just didn't have time to cast it on so i will do it tomorrow the it's part of a call um, on Ravelry and it runs until the end of May, so it's going to be fine. 
that's all I have for whips actually. And the rest is all my stash and bookshelf enhancements. Which is quite substantial, to be honest. Uh, where is it? So we... We... Yeah, we made a common order with some friends last week um, for stuff on a website called Lenny Tricot, which has a really, really big range of, of yarns and books and everything. So I ordered uh, Tosh DK from uh, Madeline Tosh in the colorway Onyx. That's I made I made a Ricky hat last year with it was one and a half years ago and I lost it in London so and I've been wanting to make a new one ever since but I never really uh, got the occasion to order a new one because there is a store in Paris well it's it's Loisiveté so it's the sister shop to La Bien Aimée and uh, they sell this game for 28 euros and the website where we ordered has it for 24 75 or something so I have absolutely nothing against Loisiveté. I know that they have different costs because of the shop, the, the brick and mortar shop, you know. Um, but I will go for the cheaper one. So I ordered this and I ordered um, books, which I will show you later on at the end. Also, my friend Imo, so Imogen, to thank me for the sleeping mask, she offered me this lovely, lovely skein of her. Uh, merino falkland or falkland merino um, it's a hundred percent fingering so 400 meters 400 grams and the shade is called caillou dans le ciel so pebbles in the sky super super subtle you know it's lovely gray i think you will see it more blue than it actually is but it's really uh, it's really clean gray yeah i love it it's really soft i'm actually considering making but creating a design for a hat with it. Um, um, yeah, I'm currently weighing ideas to be continued. We will see that. If not, I have so many hat patterns in my library um, on Ravelry that I will definitely find something. Oh. I will show you the last... Um, Fab Muse Alchemist kit which I received. It's the last kit but it's not the last collection because she issues a collection with every of her kits. Uh, this one is the Dreamer. What did I do with that? Did I lose it? Did I move it? Ah, I put it in the bottom of the box. This, so this one is the Dreamer issue because she has four, well, Arohanets, Francoise has four archetypes for Fiber Muses, and this one is the Dreamer. Um, I think the, la the next collection will be the Mystic. I think it's the only one which she hasn't done yet. There was something really funny when I opened the box. I, uh, even before I saw the label on the, on the skeins, I, I recognized the maker, actually, the dyer. They come from Mon Chip Shop, which is a French company. Well, she's a French dyer. I find it funny because the box came all the way from the US with actually French yarn. So it's pretty ironic, in my opinion. The two colors are really, really nice. So I got this one, which is called Spre Spreading Aroha. I, th I think both of them are actually exclusive colorways for the box because the names are inspired by Francoise's universe. And yeah, so it's on her fairy base, which has Stellina. Oh, the, yeah, the light is really bad. Anyway, I hope you see that it's actually sparkling. So her fairy base is Merino Nylon and Stellina. It's fingering weight. And this one is called Ignite Magic, which is a phrase which uh, Francoise uses often uh, either in her newsletters or on her podcast. It's really nice. I love it. It's a beautiful, beautiful um, colorway. 
it's fingering weight again and it's uh, superwash merino and nylon it's her petit pied uh, base the the other combination would have been this one with a uh, pink yarn which is called spreading love so yeah you can see it there mm. so they are exclusive colorways um yeah i don't really know what i will make for them because i'm not really appealed by the the patterns not that they're not nice that's not the point but i think that yeah they don't really inspire me right now so i don't know the goodies which were in the kit were this uh lovely hand stitch notebook from infinite thread it's really nice i love these hand stitched well stitched motifs you know find them really um intricate and i love them there were stitch markers removable stitch markers actually with um adventure in blue and yellow and kyanite and also blue tiger eye i don't know if you i will try to show you but i'm afraid that it will not focus no not focusing um anyway you can actually pull them a bit and remove the stuff so you can probably use them as progress keepers as well the little stones are very pretty and the shape is nice as well so they they are from dale and hair which have a, an etsy shop yeah the last piece of the of the, of the kit was this um knitting dish and it's so nice it's probably it's super convenient to put on the table and put your stitch markers in you know so you don't lose them which happens to me on a regular basis i just they just fall on the sofa and then they disappear you know it's, it's a bit like socks in the washing machine although i never lose socks because i will wash them in nets but well in mesh bags anyway <laughs> um i think it's handmade and i find it really pretty yeah, I lost a stitch marker at Friends last week, and uh, they, when when we came to have lunch with them on, on Wednesday, they said, "Oh, we found a small, you know, a small bead on the with with a metal ring on the sofa. Is that yours?" Oh yeah, I did. I do remember that uh, I actually lost the stitch marker at yours last time I came. So that can avoid it happening, at least on my own sofa, because I can't really bring it with me everywhere. But it would be a good thing. So that's that was the last Fabi News Alchemy kit. Um, my my last order. No, not it's not my last order. I received this sweater, which I really love. It says I don't know which direction the text will be when I when I'm done, but it says in the wool for love. Um, it's made from well. Bernie, the design comes from Bernie from In the Wool for Love. She has a French speaking newsletter, weekly newsletter, where you can find out about other knitters and designers. And she made this range of sweaters with messages. And this one was the one I liked the most. So I think the color is marled white and the text is blue with the, well, this one you can see fine, the pink dot. Um, it's re I'm sorry for the wrinkles. I just uh, put it on to try it, and uh, I put it back on the on the shelf without really folding it properly. So it's a bit wrinkled. But anyway, it's really soft. It's not too thick, um, so it's probably more of a mid-season uh, sweater than a really winter thing. But I took the size M, which is what I usually wear, and was fine. So really happy about it although it did well the delivery did take a little longer than for other friends i have who ordered it as well but well that kind of stuff happens they are made um on order so they have no stocks that's maybe why it happened well i don't know i don't know i don't know but i finally received it which is all that's really important oh and 
last but not least, um, bookshelf, bookshelf editions. I got this book, which is um, Shetland Lace, Knitted Shetland Lace. It has, um, I mean, 22 patterns, I think, uh, which go from ribbon to uh, shawls. Yeah, because my my um, my challenge this year is to actually start knitting Shetland lace because I find them so beautiful. My ultimate challenge is to actually make a shawl like this. But that's not for uh, anytime soon. That's not going to happen anytime soon. I need to practice a bit first. I think I will start with the, this. If I manage to open it, this ribbon to practice actually ooh, oh hello sun um to practice reading the charts because as pretty as they are they are also not that simple let's say yeah not that simple and also it's a french speaking book and i'm really not used to speak to to knitting in french anymore so i'm a bit confused with some of the words which they use yeah it will take quite a bit of practice but the results the result would be so nice I can't wait yeah challenges I'm I'm actually more of a progress knitter than a result oriented knitter you know I like I like yeah it's the process which really um, attracts me the so the book has patterns but it also has explanations as to um, how to knit a short row border or or crochet a border or how to block and um, general knitting explanations and chart explanations but still um so it's it's really a nice book but the next one which i will order because i have one planned already will be in english so that I can actually you know put them side by side and compare and see um try to make to make um, some things more clear you know the next thing which I ordered was the fourth issue of Len magazine it's beautiful as always the the patterns which are inside are gorgeous um, like hey, where are they where are they I this time I didn't put uh, page markers which I should have done obviously those socks they're gorgeous. I love them. Well, as soon as I start knitting socks, obviously. Mm, it will happen at some point. You also have really interesting interviews with uh, La Bien Aimée, for example. Well, Aimée, which uh, has uh, Aimée here. That's her. Ooh. Who owns uh, La Bien Aimée and L'Oisiveté. Um, you also have um a profile on jared flood and as always the beautiful patterns and yeah and pictures the aesthetics of these of this magazine are just beautiful i just love it <laughs> yeah i don't i don't really have one pattern chosen yet apart from the socks but I will most likely do something from it. There's also um, there's also a small travel guide on Paris, which I find pretty I find pretty funny because I will probably discover new places, <laughs> if, even if I've been living here for five years now, over five years actually. Hmm. Last book I ordered was the Book of Habs, which I've had my eyes on for over a year now. Um, it's a book by Kate Davis, which has um, basically everything you need to know about Habs because it starts with an illustrated is history and um, modern takes on on the Hab and and how to uh, construct well the construction and archive pictures. Why you see Scottish women wearing Habs, and it also has patterns not only explanations that won't do 
13 patterns plus explanations and um, special techniques and everything the pattern which i really like well the patterns which i like the most are this wrap particularly because it has really really nice shoulder details and it's so so pretty and the x the hexa hub which is gigantic when it's completely well, lit, when 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 it's full it's gigantic but i think you have the explanations for the um half and two thirds and the full one but the full one requires over 1500 meters of yarn so what i really love about it is the texture i don't know if you can really see it but the texture is beautiful beautiful so yeah one day i will make it you you can see that i'm a pretty ambitious knitter at the moment um yeah i have yeah i have some ambition the um, designs are not all from Kate Davis. There is, uh, for example, Gudrun Johnston and Vera Velimeki and Bristol Ivy, Hazel Tyndall, Helen Magnuson, among others. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to starting on it to actually read the text. Because I, you know, last year I subscribed to uh, Kate Davis's um, Inspired by Isla Club, and this year I'm following the West Highland Way Club, and I love the way she writes. You know, it's it's a pattern collection, but there's so much more than that, and it's just amazing. Um, the last thing I had in my mail this week was my podcaster pass for EYF and i'm so happy um can't wait to go there it's in two weeks already and i will be leaving in 11 days because i will be arriving in edinburgh on the 14th so as to be ready on thursday when it starts and what came with the with the, the pass was um a shape card and samples from blacker yarns from the latest range actually which is jacob um, yarn that's the band um so it's part of their breeds range so it's a hundred percent pure jacob yarn a uh, wool jacob wool i got the dk because it exists in four ply and dk so these are the four well, these exist in two weights these are only DK and these are only um, four ply. They are beautiful. So these are natural shades actually of, of the, the fleece. Because Jacob, Jacob sheep, honestly, the first time I saw them, I googled the name because I had never heard it before. Um, I was like, what the hell? Where did these come from? They are horned and they have um, they have black and white fleeces, so um, so they're really funny to watch to look at. But anyway, so these colors are actually just so this is the lighter um, fleece and these are made by mixing the lighter with the darker fleece. So they are really basically natural shades of gray brown. And these are dyed over these natural shades. So that's why, hence the progression in colors, you know. They are so beautiful. I really, really like this dark blue, for example. I don't know what it looked like. It's more, it's more like a, yeah, I don't know how to describe that. It's almost, we say, in French, we say bleu pétrole, you know, or bleu canard. Uh, it's, it's a really, really dark teal. Yeah. And I love, love this one. So I got the purple granite and the purple basalt, which are the two um, deeper shades of purple and DK weight. I'm really looking forward to swatching them. And maybe I'm thinking to, of putting this one in the hat, actually in the zigzag hat, which I'm currently knitting instead of the black, but I don't know. They are surprisingly soft 
it's just like the Shetland, you know. It is rustic wool, but it's definitely not scratchy wool. Um, they are, I'm sure they will be really, really pleasant to knit with. They are bouncy and not too, well, they have a small halo, you know, but it's not, I don't know if you will see it, maybe on darker, yeah. It has a small halo, but it's nothing that will, you know, scratch your face or your neck or wherever you decide to wear the stuff. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to knitting with them, really. I will swatch and then I will see what I make with the rest. Um, so thank you so much, Blackbear, because I had... I, had never um, knit with black and yarns before before I ordered the, the Shetland for my hat but I will really um, I will really open my eyes when I get to Edinburgh and check out their full range well the range which they will have on their um, in the in the in the lounge because I think they are definitely worth it <laughs> You should really, really check this out. So that's all I wanted to tell you. Well, yes and no, actually. I wanted to mention that uh, I will be at the festival on Thursday all day. Uh, Friday, probably all the afternoon or starting around 12 or something. Uh, I don't know about Saturday yet, but I will also be at the event, um, at the Meet the Shepherdess event on Sunday morning in case you're going. Um, I will be at the knit night, the big knit night uh, on Thursday and at the Kaylee with my husband on Friday. So if you see me, if you want to uh, meet me, please, please um, come and say hi. It's always a pleasure to meet people, or particularly people who follow me, but anyway, anyone. Um, if you recognize me and see me, just come forward and say hi. Because I've had one of my followers lately on Instagram who told me that she saw me at the at the fair um, last month, but she didn't dare coming around because I was with other people. And really, I've never bitten anyone, and you won't disturb me. Um, it's always so nice to um, to have followers come and say hi and say that uh, yeah, just. Say that they follow me and that they, well, I assume that if you follow me and come say hi, it means that you actually appreciate what I do. But it's always weird, but it's also always really pleasant. So please, please come forward. And I will be on the podcast lounge, uh, well, on Thursday and on Friday. So there's that um, time, I think it's around lunchtime, that um, there will be basically all the podcasters who are there on well all, all the guest podcasters and any podcaster who wants can come over to the lounge at these moments and they are pretty sure to yeah so if you want to i'm so confused right now i'm so sorry um so what i'm saying is there are dedicated times at the podcast lounge for meet the podcasters but any time is welcome so if you see me just come and say hi so now that's really it for today. Um, I hope you enjoyed this slightly longer than usual episode. I hope you won't get bored or didn't get bored. Thank you for uh, watching it until now, until the end. Um, in two weeks, I will be in Edinburgh. So I don't know what form the podcast will take yet, but there will be a video, definitely. Um, until then, well, take good care. Enjoy your knitting. Enjoy your sewing. And uh, see you very soon. Bye.